Hello everybody, I'm Nighthead. We are playing Minecraft City Construction Challenge. Today we're going to do a little bit of work over here. Uh, but I'll just show you this over here. You can see there's a tower kind of in the distance above the trees. Uh, there's the third or second one <clears throat> way over there. And just above the trees you can kind of make out a third one over there. Uh, I built watchtowers. And I recorded that episode, but the voice audio didn't record. I had the uh, the microphone muted. And so that was kind of a lost cause, which is unfortunate. Uh, that was a full episode's worth of work there. So we now have those. Those are three of the things that we need to advance to stage two. We also need, I think, one more uh, community kind of building, which is what we're going to be doing today. And then I think we're pretty much ready to advance to stage two. We just need to get some beds into these houses. Or advance to stage three. Um, so today what we're actually going to be working on is a church. And I was considering putting it here. Right there. But then we would have to move... We'd have to do some more terraforming. Kind of move this out probably... Probably out quite a bit, and that's a lot of dirt, and dirt's kind of hard to come by unless you're, you know, ripping down hills and stuff. So instead, I think we're going to put it here, and then we're going to try to maybe smooth this off a little bit, and then bring the path around. I don't like having it that far from where the village square is going to be, but I think it's going to work. It should be fine. Plus, we got this nice little pond here. Um... So let's get to work on that. We're going to need probably all of this. And we might not even have enough. <clears throat> yeah, we'll go with that for now. Um, and it's fitting that we're working on a church today because they selected a new pope today, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it's not something that happens very often. Kind of an odd choice. Uh, the guy they selected is an Argentinian. Um, oh, I'm off. There we go. Has to be 5x5. Five five. Uh, so he's an Argentinian. I believe the first... Actually, he's a lot of firsts. He's first in a lot of things. He's the first... Uh, per, er, the first pope from... The Americas. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, he's the first um, first Jesuit pope. Jesuits are a kind of priestly order within the church. Um, he's the first. Well, if you want, yeah, he's kind of the first non-European. Not really. Uh, there was, I think, a few from Syria, perhaps. Uh, but the first in like a thousand years. The first non-European in like a thousand years. Most of the popes, like the vast majority of the popes, have been Italian. Oh, there we go. So that's kind of an interesting... Uh, we're going to come out like that. That's kind of an interesting choice, I guess. Um, I haven't read up on him a whole lot. Um, <clears throat> there was a Canadian in the running, which was kind of interesting, but ultimately he didn't get picked. But it's still pretty... Pretty interesting choice. He chose the name, uh, like, whenever a pope gets selected, they choose uh, what their papal name has, will be, and I think they've been doing that almost without exception <clears throat> for 1,500 years or so. Before that, they usually just went with whatever their actual name was. Uh, but this guy chose Francis the uh, First. Apparently, is it a, a, a reference to Saint Francis of Assisi, who was a pretty pretty dominant figure in Catholic theology? I'm not actually a Catholic. I went to a Catholic school as a kid, though. So, 
a lot of the a lot of the history in that kind of sunk in. I'm not particularly religious now, but I do find it fascinating, especially uh, the Catholic Church. I'm a big fan of fantasy and things like that, and you'll often find <clears throat> um, kind of copy versions of the Catholic Church in a lot of fantasy works. Um, if you have pretty much any kind of religious order, it'll be in some way modeled after the Catholic Church. So that's neat. I also enjoy um, kind of the pageantry of it, I guess, if you want to call it that. There's, um, like, one of the things I really like about the Catholic Church is... Oh, no, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I want to do this. There we go. Is, um, <clears throat> the... I guess all the ceremony, all the ritual, and that kind of thing. I find that really kind of interesting. It, uh... just lends a real sense of history to the whole thing, which might sound, like, if you're a Catholic, that might sound a little bit patronizing. <clears throat> um, I guess it kind of might be not, uh, it's almost like cultural tourism kind of thing. I was in a wedding, a wedding party, uh, a few years back in Chicago for a friend of mine. He was getting married, and they they aren't particularly religious people, but they opted to go with a, a Catholic ceremony anyway. And that was really kind of fascinating to be a part of. I hadn't been uh, in a Catholic church or gone to a mass or anything like that in a long time. So it was kind of neat to get back in there and re just kind of remember... Everything involved, a Catholic wedding is not a slapdash affair. Very, very involved. There's a lot of kneeling and standing and whatnot. There we go. We actually had to wear kilts. He's, uh, his family's, uh, Scottish. And so the entire groom's party wore kilts, which was really kind of neat. Uh, do I want it to be three high or four high windows? Let's go with four. Uh, I would actually wear, you know, after that, after that, having never worn a kilt before, after doing that, I would wear a kilt all the time if it was socially acceptable. Those were comfortable, comfortable pieces of clothing, and we did in actually wear stuff under under the kilt. It wasn't. Um, Oh, natural, if you will. But apparently, you can also get, uh, like, working kilts kind of things. Like, uh, I think they're called utila kilts. I was looking at that after the wedding, just out of fun. And, yeah, you can actually get, you know, everyday kilts. Ones that are, you know, they come with, um... Oh, we need some white wood. Ones that come with... Ooh, the sun's going down. Maybe we should go sleep. Kilts that come with... Um, let's just get a whole stack. Sort of like built-in tool belts. Things like that. Um, really quite neat. But again, I don't know... When you would ever wear one. You would look kind of weird. That's the problem with a lot of a lot of uh, traditional cultural outfits is that they don't they don't really fit in well with um, anything. <laughs> uh, like when would you ever wear, say, a Ukrainian traditional Ukrainian outfit? Like you see with I don't know, maybe you've ever seen Ukrainian dancers and things like that. <clears throat> they do not they do not fit well. Uh, in modern style. Which is another thing I actually like about the Catholic Church. It's, it's very kind of medievalish 
choices in clothing and such with the road like what other what other uh job it's not really a job i guess they wouldn't consider it a job but what other job would you uh wear you know full on robes all the time or those you know the famous for the bizarre kind of hats things like that Yeah, let's do this. Let's put uh, these in the back, too. So yeah, new Pope. Very interesting, very exciting. Well, kind of exciting, I guess, if, it, if it's something that would be important to you. I suppose it would be exciting. I just find it... Uh, I just find big changes like that fascinating. You know, presidential elections, new Popes, things like that. Um... I actually went to school for, and prepare to groan, because that's usually the response I get. I actually went to school, oh crap, to school for politics. That's my college degree. Not particularly useful in the long run. I do nothing at all related to that. But... Um, yeah, I just love history, and I love uh, that whole kind of thing. Big, big kind of world-affecting events are, are cool. There we go. And we're going to fill in some kind of window over here. Uh, and then along the sides, we'll put some glass panes in there. But now, now we need to do the roof. And I should probably eat, and we need to get up there. And do I have any dirt left? Or did I use it all? I used it all. I'll just use some wood then. <clears throat> so the other kind of thing that I've been following lately is the whole Sim City debacle, if you will. And as, as a huge fan of the series, I've played, you know, Sim City all the time when I was a kid. Um, was big fan of SimCity 4, which I actually just reinstalled and managed to kind of get working. They don't, it doesn't work well on multi-core processors. Um, but it's just kind of really disappointing how that whole thing has played out and then Seems every day there's some new kind of revelation about just how bad it is, just how screwed up uh, some of the mechanics are. Uh, bad AI. A. Um, let's do that. A really disappointing uh, depth to the game. It doesn't really. You can almost autoplay it. And, you know, it plays itself, assuming it doesn't collapse under its own weight with uh, the AI problems. So that's a little disheartening. I think their biggest problem with that game was, especially for people like me who are huge fans of the franchise, It's it sounds like it's really been dumbed down, and that a lot of the AI choices that you know, they could have worked cool if they actually worked in the way they were intended. Uh, the big one being... Um, well, they, they made a big deal about how they were extensively modeling uh, the character, like the, the your city inhabitants. But there doesn't actually seem to be that much of a depth to the AI at all. Um, <clears throat> and in some respects, they actually did come out and say exactly what it was going to be well before the launch. Um, but I think maybe some people, like the full implications of what actually would be going on weren't known. So like, the... Every day, you're, I mean, your sims are basically day laborers. Your citizens are basically day laborers and homeless. Uh, every morning, they kind of leave the house, 
looking for a job, and they just take the closest job that they can find. There's no kind of memory in there. They don't remember where they worked before. They just go out the door, and the first business or industry offering a job, that's the one they take. Um, and that's... I guess there's maybe potential there for an interesting game, but <clears throat> it's... It creates problems, because they, um, not remembering where they worked or having any kind of decision-making system. Are we already out of stairs? Man, not having any kind of decision-making system, uh, they, it just <clears throat> falls apart, and you get you know, these massive gridlocks, because nobody's actually going anywhere, they're just kind of going. They're just going for the purpose of finding a place to pop into. They don't have an actual destination. And this is true with a lot of the, the services and things like that. You can have, you know, it's almost impossible to get service coverage because every single police car that you have in the city will all go to the same criminal because that's the one that the system has prioritized as the first criminal on the list and so they all go there and it doesn't matter you know somebody could be burning down half your town as an arsonist uh, and they don't care they're, they're going after this shoplifter over here every single squad car or you know other things even, even randomness really in a lot of situations would be an improvement on the AI which is astonishing um, like when your sims get out of work, they become homeless, and they search for a house. And they go to the nearest available house that they can find on their travel, which means you just get a horde of workers, you know, going through the city, this mad rush towards whatever house they happen to find available, and then they all try to get into that one house, but they can't, so it fills up, and then the horde just moves on. You get massive gridlock, because nobody's actually going anywhere, they're all going everywhere. So yeah, just uh, really disappointing. The size of the cities is disappointing. They're really small areas compared... Like, I, I was starting up uh, SimCity 4... And the cities are pretty massive, especially, like, you have three different region sizes, and the the big one is just huge, absolutely huge, and then, you know, the small one's pretty small, but medium one's kind of in between, but you have that choice. And then the reason they said that you couldn't be doing that is because, oh, there's, you know, the, the calculations to manage the, the AI, which is apparently non-existent, uh, wouldn't be able to handle it. Your computer... You know, we made this decision because computers aren't powerful enough. We had to offload a lot of the processing to the server. Turns out that's bunk. Turns out that's not... Oh! Turns out that's not how it works, uh, even a little bit. Most of the calculations are done on your computer. If you lose server connection, which tons of people do, because their servers were not prepared, um, your city's fine. Nothing happens to it. Hmm. Yeah, let's make this the top. There we go. Your city's fine. Nothing happens to it. Um, the only difference is it can't trade with the regions around it. <clears throat> Like, your city is one city in uh, a region that might contain, you know, up to, I think, 16 cities or something like that. All the same size as yours, but they all can be doing something different. Um, I'm going to take a drink. So... 
that's what the server is apparently handling. It's the calculations of all the, you know, the resources moving back and forth, the people moving back and forth. Most of the time the city's down and you're not syncing up anyway, it sounds like. So it's kind of a moot point of whether that's, you know, even important. Or even having any effect on your game because it's not happening much of the time. And as a result, you can't really build the interconnected city that the whole point of the always online system was supposedly intended to provide. You know, the game experience that was supposedly intended to provide. But when you're offline, the city's running fine. There's no ridiculous calculations. The AI is abysmally bad. So I'm not sure what to make of it. What, you know, was this... I, and I had a lot of people will say, oh, this is EA, the, you know, poor Maxis. <clears throat> I don't think so. I think this is Maxis's fault. I'm pretty sure they just made a shitty game. Or a game that could have been good. Maybe they didn't have the time. Cons like, maybe they were pushed to ship it before it was ready. Who knows? But the end result is it's, in a current form, not a very good game. And that's really, really disappointing. Okay, I think we can put the capping on that roof now. Anybody spawn up here? No? Okay. Nope. Oh, there we go. Oh. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so that's done. Well, for the roof anyway. Anybody inside? Not yet. Oh, we gotta do the back. The back wall here still. No mobs? I'm not on peaceful, am I? No. Um, let's have... Let's have it like this. Oh! Nope, that's the wrong place. There we go. Oh, really? I don't think I have <clears throat> any more cobble. Let's just do this. We don't need a lot more. That three, no. There. And then we'll fill that in with glass. Um, <clears throat> let's go just see... Hmm. Okay, I need to get some glass anyway. I'm going to get some more cobblestone. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm uh, back. So let's do... Anything spawn in here? Nope. Let's do... Actually, let's get some light in here. Is that right? Yeah, okay, that'll work. Uh, so let's do the back window here first. Just like this. It's a shame we don't have stained glass, but... Make do with what we have. So yeah, I'm I'm just disappointed as a fan that the game, that SimCity uh, 5 is what it should be called, SimCity uh, is what they're calling it, is such a bust. Really, I don't think people would have had as much complaints if they had just called it SimCity Online, but for whatever reason, they chose not to go that route.
marketing really just, I guess. Nobody would really have bought it if they called it that. Uh, so we need also just to put on an altar of some kind there. Let's uh, do this. Make some of those. <clears throat> we'll just put it right up front here. There we go. When I went to church uh, as a kid, for school we had to go to uh, mass every week, and they usually had, uh, or the altar was just this big kind of stone slab right in the middle, so that works for me. And we need to put some pews in. Let's go get a little more, or a few more. Stairs. Here we go. And we'll just light them up with the window. That's good. So it turns out we actually didn't need more stairs. We had 16. This is going to use exactly 16. Fair enough. Okay. So, that's not bad. I based this kind of off an image I found uh, doing some searches online for a church. It was more stone, but we don't have that many kinds of stone. I think this works. It's supposed to be, you know, a simple church. It's already pretty ostentatious with all this stone, considering everything else around here is basically wood. <clears throat> Could, I don't know about the, that light wood there. I was just trying that out. That might have to go. Um, when I was kind of playing around with creative, I tried doing this stuff here. But it didn't look very good because of the stairs on top. Works for me, I guess. That'll be fine. Let's put uh, a door on this. There we go. Um, there. We'll put kind of a... One of these things on there. There we go. Bam. Let's go take a look at that window from behind. Whoa! That was loud. That was right in my ear. Is he up here, or is he... Is there a zombie spawner here? Another underground water... thing. Let's get a shovel. Oh, man, that scared me. He was right in, right in my ear. Asshole. Okay. Is this just a bunch of zombies or a zombie spawner? I hear a skeleton, so it's probably just zombies. Where's he? Okay, well, you die. Yeah, okay. No spawner, that's unfortunate. Okay. Uh, so I guess that's going to be it for this episode. Let's get out of this hole. Actually, let's grab this dirt. We can always use dirt. Place. There you go. So that looks okay from the back. Uh, again, they could use more highlights, but I don't want to do too much with it because it is supposed to be, you know, the simple village church. That's probably going to have to change. That sticks out way too much. I don't know if I'm just going to put that stone or 
change it to this wood, but something else. In here, it's looking good. I like it. Yeah, that doesn't work from the inside, either. Maybe we could put, I don't know, wood along there. Like another one of these beams, but along the top. That might look better. <clears throat> we'll have to look into that. And that might also work for the outside columns. So that's something to think about. Uh, next episode, now that we've got this done, I think the only thing we need to do is put the beds in the houses. Maybe we'll do a bit of touch-up work, and that should be enough to get us to stage three. Iron. But we'll see about that. So, once again, I'm Nightcat. We are playing Minecraft City Construction Challenge. I'll see you next time. Take care.